So hello and welcome once again to New Junction and welcome to my garden. Now I know exactly what you're going to say, it's been absolutely ages since the last video. Now I've got to be honest with you, I've been absolutely hampered by this stuff, the rain. Now, yes, those clips may have been altered slightly with a slightly more intensive soundtrack just to make the uh, <laughs> rain seem a bit more uh, impressive. Um, however, when you are working in the garden, particularly doing any sort of painting, woodwork or gluing, as I've been doing, um, it's got to be dry. You're not only dry on the day you're doing it, but the day after, um, just so things can really settle in. So apologies for the delay, but sun's out now. So uh, <laughs> let's get on. And I have no idea who told me it was a good idea to build a uh, garden railway in the garden. Absolutely stupid idea. Hold on, it was my idea. Anyway, now it's time for a little recap and I'll just bring you back up to speed to where we were and to what I'm going to be doing. So Lulu's just reminded me, um, the method I'm actually using for my garden railway is the same method that's been in the last three issues of Hormy magazine. So if my next video takes as long as this one has taken to come out, and you wanted to see how I'm doing it much quicker, I'll put a link down below for Key Model World, the Hormie magazine website, for you to see exactly how I'm doing it. And don't forget, if you subscribe to the magazine, it's free. So this looks a bit odd, just me mingling around in the bushes down the bottom of the garden. However, I needed a bit of the layout to show you where I got up to last time, which is still incomplete. Right. So where we left off, the framing was pretty much done, particularly on this side of the garden. Um, I then went on to paint it all with this Cuprinol, and this is the forest oak colour, which I think looks quite nice. It blends in very nicely. Um, I've currently used um, probably one and a half tubs of that stuff. Um, so what I've done since the last video mainly, which you're about to see in a very speedy montage, um, is I've <coughs> trimmed up my plywood um, to fit on top and then uh, PVA glued the edges, and then I've also painted it with the Cuprinol paint. So, here's one I made earlier. So as you can see, it's got some lovely uh, rough edges with the glue, however, um, it will last quite a while. Then they've been screwed down on the top, and then <clears throat> I've then covered that over ooh, with some felt. You tack that down, and then uh, you're good for the track to go on top of that. And it's as simple as that process. So I will go into a bit more detail over each step as we go on, but um, that's in essence what you're about to see. So cue the montage. So once the woodwork's all laid, it's then time to move on to the felt top. Now, 
For this, I can uh, use a multitude of things, but I've decided to use uh, shed roof felt. Now, the best color I've seen um, is actually this stuff, which actually looks very gray and looks very ballast-like on top, um, but it's actually green. So you have to be very careful, particularly if you're ordering online, um, as to which colors you go for. Obviously, normally you'd be able to go down to a shop. However, uh, in the current scenario, if you are probably more often than not ordering online these days, um, just double check between the sort of gray and the green, because the green tends to be the more gray option of the two. How bizarre. Anyway, <clears throat> let's move on. So with the help of Lulu for this bit, there's certain bits you need. So obviously you need the felt. You then uh, stick the felt down with some felt tacks. So they come in boxes of um, a couple of hundred, so you don't tend to run out of them pretty quick. Obviously they get hammered down with a lovely hammer. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, when you're overlapping felt pieces, as so here's the next one, you need some felt uh, adhesive. Um, and all you do is run a bead along the edge and then uh, literally just stick it in place and then tack it down with some of these nails and away you go. Um, and that dries overnight. Right. <clears throat> I should add that also stops water seeping through and pooling on the uh, plywood underneath. So it's all about keeping as much moisture away from the wood as possible. Right, once you've tacked that down, particularly the top, I tend to tack them down every sort of 12 inches or so. Um, so there's tacks here and tacks here, there's a row. I've also tacked it to the side. You will notice there's an overhang. What you can do is you can either fold that round, which uh, can look a bit messy, but what I do is I like to fold it around tightly to create a line, and then I peel it back round, and then using some scissors, I'll just cut off the end. So, I'm gonna lay this piece now to uh, hopefully demonstrate. So hopefully you can see the workstation where I'm uh, about to put this next piece in. So what I do, following on, so I've already tacked half of the first one down. I've left the end loose, just in case. And also the overlapping tacks will uh, go across both layers, just to really firm them out. So first things first, I need to double check the actual uh, felt sheet I've cut um, actually fits and goes on, which it does. Now you see why I've picked a nice straight piece to do this. <laughs> so the first thing to do is to take the end off my uh, adhesive gun and just nicely make a bead if it wants to work. Try and get the bead continuous. Simple as that, and just be careful because there will be a bit of excess pressure, which will always leak out a bit. So I always think, put the nail in the end. It can be a few minutes before you need it again, and you don't want it spilling out all over the garden. So while that's there, it doesn't set particularly quickly, so no need to panic and rush. So all you do is you line that up again, overlapping the new bit with the previous bit, making sure it's square. You've got to overlap enough that there's enough room to get some of these tacks in. So while that's in position, you do have to check with some of these tacks as well. Some of them, um, there's obviously a nice point on that one, but sometimes they have a blob of metal on the end and that can really stop them going into your woodwork. Um, I should have said as well, um, but I've just forgot to do it myself again. Um, you've got to check underneath um, that there's no nails there. Feels like old times this. It's keeping an eye the whole time that the felt is staying square because the vibrations of hammering it in can uh, twist it. See, they go in very nicely. And they're very strong as well. <clears throat> and where you see it's a bit, um, I suppose, misshaped slightly, it's not very tight to the board, it does settle down. So the next one, it's the one in the side, feeling where to go. Of course, <clears throat> once we've got the bulk of the railway in, or the felt in, then you're happy, you can really tack more in.
And there we go. That's the next seam pretty much done. <clears throat> and while that's quite a loose edge now, come the morning, that'll be uh, very tight and the track will go straight over that. No problem at all. So what I'm gonna do now is move on another 12 inches, roughly, and uh, do another three tacks. So as you can see, a lot of the felt is now drying. Um, I'm just waiting for the morning before I cut the, uh, the trim off, but uh, it's time to start laying a bit of track. So let's get on. So for the next phase, before I lose the light, um, it's all about track work. And believe me, particularly in a garden, um, you need quite a bit of it. Um, you don't quite realize <laughs> how many boxes you go through or could go through um, being outside and not being restricted by a traditional room. So as ever, I've gone for Pico Streamline Track and this is the O-Gage Universal and it's the SL700BH, um, which is the nickel silver bullhead rail type. And you get uh, 12 in a pack. Um, which doesn't go very far, so I'm going to need a lot of boxes. And I'm, what I've been doing while I've been uh, waiting for this video, the better weather, is I've been building up the boxes um, sort of one at a time every payday. Treat myself. <laughs> um, we won't talk about points because that's really dear. However, um, the good thing about this stuff is you can use um, double O gauge fish plates um, where necessary, and of course it gets soldered together, which I'll go on about later anyway. Right, so before I lose the light, I'm going to um, lay a bit of track, hopefully around the station area. So here we are at what is arguably the most fun part of the entire build, which is laying the track. So uh, I'm not trying to teach anyone how to suck eggs, but I'm just going to run you through how I do it. So equipment wise, I've got my hammer, I've got my uh, trap pin drill, and I've got my uh, rail cutters. Um, you can use a Dremel, but uh, I've never needed one. I've got um, fish plates, and I've also got a wagon, which is full of my fish plates, trap pins, and off-cut sleepers, um, which I just push along and it follows me around. Right, so <clears throat> where we're up to, this piece of track has just been laid and now uh, we're about to go around the corner. So the first things first, because it's not a straight piece of track, as I curve the end, you can see the end, the rails don't line up. So the first thing I have to do is cut the end sleeper off on both sides. So once we're there, the first thing I tend to do is just to manipulate the piece of track that I'm about to lay into uh, the position I want it to go in. Um, trying to make the curve as wide as possible. And then what that does, if I move my hand, it just shows me where the rails meet. So as you can see, there's probably 
um, a half a centimetre gap on the near side to me and the other side's perfect so what I need to do is take probably half a centimetre off the far rail there I'm just going to do this with my uh, track cutters and then I uh, shape the end with the track cutters just so I can get the track pins back on just test that out and there we go so that now marries up near enough perfectly again all doing it visually by eye and again the joy of uh, O gauge track is uh, there's more margin for error so you really can be as uh, gun ho as I am so next step is to put the fish plates on and then line it up Again, these are double O gauge fish plates. Just have to squeeze the rails in, making sure the fish plate is equal distance either side of the both pieces of track. Just making sure the uh, track holds a very nice shape. So I am looking down the piece of track, just to make sure that it's the, the shape I want. Now. One thing that is important, um, it's quite a cool day today, but obviously a garden railway is going to be in the blaring sun and the freezing cold. Uh, so a cool day, I want a uh, medium gap. If it was on a hot day, um, you'd want next to no gap um, for expansion. And then on a cold day, you want a big gap. Right, so I'm just going to show you how I uh, very simply put track pins in. So I take my little hand drill, and hopefully you can see this. Just lightly drill a hole through the plastic, which goes straight through. Pick one up, try and place the, uh, the pin as vertical as possible, and then uh, very lightly tap it down. It's better to take your time and let it go in very slowly than to rush it and to snap the uh, pin or bend the pin. Um, the next thing on my job, once I've tacked both ends down, I'll just slightly press on the track and as you can see there's a bit of a spring I want to alleviate all the spring so here there's no spring in the track at all whereas here there is so that tells me I want another pin somewhere around here just to firm it up so once you've laid your track especially if you've cut sleepers down you'll see there's a, a lovely gap in the middle there all you do is you take your off-cut sleeper and I use the same track cutters and I snip off the excess plastic storing that in my little O gauge wagon to put in the bin later then I cut the tops off like so so they can slide underneath the track better again nice and quick and easy do my hardest to then push it through too far and then uh, just like that and you'd never know one was missing so I'm just going to go back through the uh, the line now and add them in so that's the track down on the upper end of the uh, railway um, so I'm going to give you a quick tour of what I've done it's not the most in the world but uh, you get the idea so this top area at the end of the patio is going to be where the, the station is and the terminus for the railway. Don't forget it's going to go away, loop round and then come back on the opposite platform. And that's what I class as phase one for the garden railway. So that's why the tracks are so far apart. So uh, these run the entire length of the patio. I'm aiming to get five or six coaches either side. Now we have the, uh, the junction as we leave the station. Um, these are using the Pico uh, curved points. And uh, my temporary power point right there, just for testing, which I'll get, out, get on with in a minute. And then there's the uh, trusty wagon, which has been used uh, to carry all my track laying supplies. Now I should mention the uh, line closest to me on the inside um, isn't pinned down yet um, it's just there 
temporarily to see if it gets around this corner, which it does. So if we go around this very tight corner, as you can see, I've left the uh, edges of all the felt, particularly this edge here is gonna stay there because I'm gonna fill in this with earth. It's hard to tell on the camera, um, but the railway is actually very low, it's its lowest point. And then as you can see, it goes off. And then moving on, you can see the other end of that corner and the double track main line, which is technically single track, um, comes all the way to this corner. And then I've run out of track again. <laughs> um, I do have more, I just need to uh, crack the boxes open. But I thought I'd, uh, I'm taking long enough to bring this video to you, so I wanted to jump ahead. Right, so the next thing to do, um, long term, I will uh, solder each piece of track together. Um, this just ensures strong current, um, particularly in a garden environment. Um, so what I'm going to do now though, is particularly while it's quite a short railway, is dig out my Gage Master Prodigy and uh, give it a test. So what I'm going to do next is continue with the uh, track laying itself and keep on going. And then uh, in the next episode, hopefully I'll bring you the return loop as well. And we'll be able to get a full train leaving the station all the way around and back into the station. Right, so what have I learnt from doing this video? Well, <laughs> the first one is it rains a lot in the UK and particularly rains a lot when you're off work. So <laughs> you'll have to forgive me for this delay, as you know, when my railway was in the loft, weekly videos, bi-weekly videos were easy peasy because it is in your loft. Um, in the garden, it's become uh, um, a real challenge actually um, when it comes to the filming. Um, <laughs> the second point I've noticed is, yes, you do have to clean your railway and I, do, I did expect that. Um, however, I didn't expect pterodactyls to be living in my garden. The amount of bird <laughs> I have to clean up off the track. Um, <laughs> 
pretty much every day is quite quite astonishing and not just talking little patches we're talking mounds of the stuff so uh something somewhere is uh really laying little birdie logs onto my track work but we can overcome that um when i put the uh railway to bed i do put some spare felt pieces over the uh, uh point work um just to sort of protect it from that kind of thing the, the plain track is absolutely fine you can uh, go at it with a stiff brush hose pipe that kind of thing leaf blower if you've got one um but no easy peasy so i just wanted to say a big thank you to everyone who sent messages um across wondering is everything okay um etc etc uh, because of the, the long gap i've had by not bringing you another video um <laughs> i'm still blown away by the fact that so many people like watching my videos of my hobby um, so thank you very much for everyone who wrote in um, i think it's been the longest gap i've ever had in between videos since starting up the channel now that says a lot i should say obviously uh, for the day job i now work for hornby magazine and i do all their videos so uh, one thing i have been working on is a monthly hornby magazine show and uh, the next one goes live on friday at 8 p.m so make sure you check out the hornby magazine youtube channel um, because another video of mine will be premiering and they're uh, slightly more professional than mine <laughs> and uh, much longer as well so give you some real entertainment for the weekend and it complements your magazine should you wish to buy one right fingers crossed it won't be so long till the next video but thank you as ever for watching and i'll see you in the next one take care guys